Hello Highland Lacrosse Scholars. In this video we're going to take a look at the Algebra 1 assignment for J3 called Solve One Step Linear Equations. And for the next five, six assignments on IXL we're really going to focus on the art or the skill of how do I solve an equation. They start simple. They call these one step equations because they can be solved in one step if you use the algorithm, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and progressively through the next five, six assignments they're going to get a bit more difficult. I want to cover a couple key concepts quick before we solve some of these equations. When we're solving equations, I tend to think about it um, like you see here in blue. I think of solving equations like what value can we plug in for the variable, the x, the y, or in this case the letter d for this first equation. So what value can we plug in for that variable that would make the equation a true statement? Or in other words, what value would make the left side actually equal to the right side? And throughout this, when we solve equations, I think there's really two main methods to solve equations. A fancy math term for both of them is one method is called inspection, and another method is called using the algorithm. You've probably heard that term algorithm before when you're adding or subtracting. What they really mean when I say solving by inspection, I say treat it like a math puzzle, a mental math puzzle. What number could I plug in for the variable that makes the equation work? And the simpler the equation is, the easier that method is. The algorithm, you might recall you learned how to do the algorithm for adding, subtracting, multiplying. That's a tried and true method that always works for something. And in this case, the algorithm for solving equations is a step-by-step -step process that helps us simplify the equation. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So for this equation, they say what value for d would make the equation true. That's effectively what they mean when they say solve the equation for the variable d. And I've also copied that equation on my whiteboard up here. If I were to solve this equation by inspection, and a lot of these one-step equations, you can do that, the question is what number for d, what number plus 5.3 would give us 18.3? And some of you may be good with mental math. You may see the 0.3 with the 18 right here. And you may also see, I'm going to put a green color for the other side, the left side. On the left side, it's 5.3. On the right side, it's 18.3. So you could kind of ignore the decimals and know what number plus 5 gives you 18. I know 13 plus 5 gives me 18. So I also know 13 plus 5.3 would give me 18.3. So what I just did there, this equation was simple enough and I understood decimals well enough that I could use inspection for a second. I was able to figure out, hey, 13 is the number that if I plug it in, plus 5.3, that would give me 18.3. That must be the answer. If that doesn't work for you, if you don't know off the top of your head what number would work in this equation, then that's when the algorithm or our step-by-step -step process becomes helpful. And I'm going to usually show that on my whiteboard. The main goal of the algorithm is to get the variable all by itself. And here I see the variable is on the left side of this equation. So I want to get rid of the other term that's on the left side, the positive 5.3. And hopefully you recall from 6th grade, 7th grade math, if I want to get rid of an addition term, the opposite or the inverse of addition is subtraction. So if I subtract 5.3, that would cancel out the positive 5.3. And the only thing on the left side of my equation would now be that variable d. But any time I alter an equation, equation is just a statement that the left side is equal to the right side. Hopefully this is ingrained for all of you already. But any time I change or subtract the left side by some number, I need to subtract the same amount from the right side of the equation. This rule simply stated usually whatever I do to one side of the equation, I need to do the same thing to the other side of the equation. Otherwise, the equation breaks. It's not true anymore. So 18.3 minus 5.3, I know the 0.3 is what we talked about earlier, will cancel out. That gives me 0 0.0, and 18 minus 5 gives me 13. And so on my whiteboard here, you see how I used the algorithm to get to the same answer that inspection helped us as we just kind of thought about this. Either way, the answer is 13. All right, the next equation 
we have the left side of our equation is a fraction and it says b over 4. An important thing to learn, and I'm going to go ahead and even put this into text for us, fractions are division problems. I'm going to emphasize this one more time. Every single fraction that you run into, a fraction is really just a division problem. So I think that's an important thing here to see for the first one where the variable is part of a fraction. Fractions just mean division. So in this case, our equation b divided by 4 is equal to 4.3. I'm going to use green and red boxes again here. On the red box, we'll put the left side of the equation, and all that we have there is b divided by 4. And whatever b divided by 4 is needs to be equal in value to the right side here. And the right side of our equation is a positive 4.3, what you see in the green box there. So I'm going to write this onto my whiteboard. I think rather than talking about this with inspection, the easiest thing might be to show you the step-by-step -step or algorithm for when you see fractions. If you recall from the last problem, our variable was added. It had a b plus something, so we subtracted. We used an opposite. If I remember that fractions mean division, and b is being divided by 4 here, the opposite of division is multiplication. So if I want to solve this by the algorithm or the step-by-step -step process, the opposite of dividing b by 4 is to multiply by 4. Anytime I multiply and divide by the same number, I get right back to where I started. They cancel each other out, just like addition and subtraction. So the way to clean up fractions or to get rid of a division is to use multiplication. So if I were to multiply the left side of the equation by 4, that would get rid of the divided by 4. All I'd have is b. That's my main goal, to get the variable all by itself. But if I change the left side of the equation by multiplying by 4, the same rule, however I change one expression, I need to change the opposite expression in the same way, comes into play. So I need to multiply the right side of this equation by 4. 4.3 times 4. You could use a calculator. That doesn't bother me. But talking through that, I know 4 times 4. I'm going to put this over here. 4 times 4 gives me 16. And then I also have to do 4 times the other piece, the 0.3 piece. And if 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 0.3 is 1.2. So I just broke this down a bit. 16 plus 1.2 would give me 17.2. Again, it's totally OK with me if you want to use a calculator, if you want to do any multiplication with decimals, however you'd like. But when I do 4 times 4.3, I get 17.2. So my equation will be b is equal to 17.2. Give me a second and I'll plug that answer in here. We're going to keep moving to a future problem now. This problem, this equation we get here, and as you notice, this is high school algebra 1. They're trying to kind of force you into using the algorithm. And the way they're kind of doing that is by putting decimals into the equation. Even though they're simple one-step linear equations, by putting decimals, it makes the inspection or the mental math way a little bit more difficult and forces you into kind of using the inverse operations. That's going to help you a bunch later when the equations become more difficult and you kind of need to use the algorithm to solve them. So here, our equation, which we'll highlight quickly, says 3k equals 19.23. I don't know off the top of my head what number times 3 gives me 19.23. If I did, I could solve this by inspection. So I'm going to write the equation out. 3k equals 19.23. And I'm going to try to figure out here, how do I get the k, which is on the left side of the equation, all by itself? And here you notice that the k, whenever you see a coefficient, a number written right next to a variable, that means multiplication. This says 3 times k. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of this equation by 3. The reason I'm choosing to divide by 3 is that cancels out the multiplied by 3. 
that simplifies my equation on the left side to just say k or 1k, which is my goal. But any change I do to one side, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, I need to do the same change to the other side. So I need to figure out what 19.23 divided by 3 is. I could do the algorithm out. I could a bunch of different ways to do division. In my case, I'm going to choose to go ahead and use my Google calculator. I'd like to show you that right here. Anytime I go into my Google toolbar, where you see me up here right now, if I type in the math problem I want to do, simple math, like 19.23 divided by 3, and I use the fraction symbol there like we talked about earlier, then the Google calculator will do that work for me. It's just like having a handheld calculator right at your toolbar anytime you need. So when I plug this into my calculator, 19.23 divided by 3, I get an answer of 6.41. You may recall, if you're ever not sure on these questions, whether or not your answer is right, you can take the answer, plug it back in to double check. In the interest of time, I'm not going through that, just focusing on the skill of how to solve it. But you should really get in the habit of checking your answers as well. I'm going to go show through a few more examples here, so hopefully you get the hang of it, but I think at this point you should be good to go do this on your own, so feel free to cut the video off at any time. For this next equation, we'll go ahead and quickly put a box around it. We see the equation says 8.28, that's on the left side of our equation, needs to be equal to 3D, which is the opposite of the right side of the equation. So I'll write that down on my whiteboard, 8.28 needs to be equal in value to whatever 3 times our variable d is. You'll notice I call this the river, the line I draw through the equation. I don't really need it a lot in the beginning here when these equations are simpler, but it helps me focus on where is the variable. In this case, the variable is on the right side of the equation. It's multiplied with a coefficient of 3. So I'm going to cancel out that coefficient of 3 by dividing the opposite of multiplication is to divide. So I'll go ahead in blue there, divide both sides of my equation by 3. And I chose to do that because I saw the variable d was multiplied with 3. And division is the opposite of multiplication. That gets me to d equals whatever 8.28 divided by 3 is. Again, I'm going to use my Google calculator here. I don't really want to draw out the division, but you could do that. And if I use my Google Calculator up here, 8.28 divided by 3. My estimate, I know 9 divided by 3 is 3. I know 6 divided by 3 is 2. So if I'm putting this into my calculator correctly, it should be between 2 and 3. And I see Google spits out, seems to make sense, an answer of 2.76 up there. So I'll put that under the whiteboard quickly, 2.76. If I wanted to check that answer, whether it's correct, I could take this 2.76, put it back into the equation, and see if the right side gets an 8.28, just like the left side has. So plug that answer in 2.76, and we'll show one or two more examples. All right, great. This time, they've given us one that has subtraction. That's good to see. Anytime I see subtraction, I know that's related to addition. So the addition and subtraction problems get handled very similarly. In this case, our equation, which we'll put a quick box around, is u. I'm going to put the variable x on my whiteboard because all the variables can kind of be any letter, and I have a tough time drawing u and making that out from a couple different letters. So I'm going to write it as x minus 1.9 equals 1.1. Anytime there's only one variable in the equation, it really doesn't matter what letter I choose for that variable, just keep it consistent. If there's more than one variable, like a u and, an, and a w, now I don't want to change any of the variables or letters around. Here it says what number? Minus 1.9 equals 1.1. I actually know 3 minus 1.9 would give me 1.1, so some of you may be able to use inspection on this one. But if I don't know what number minus 1.9 would give me 1.1, the opposite of subtracting 1.9, or 1 and 9 tenths, is to add 1.9 to both sides of the equation. One and 1 tenth plus 1 and 9 tenths, the 1 and 1 would give me 2. 
one tenth and nine tenth gives me a whole unit, so that one plus two gives me a total of three point zero. At this point, I'm not going to keep showing these. I think you've got the idea for one-step equations. If you need any more help, feel free to email me. My email is ddoherty3 at bostonpublicschools.org. We'll put that in here real quick for you. Again, email is ddoherty3 at bostonpublicschools.org. And hopefully you already got that, but just in case. It doesn't want to cooperate too much. There we go. So ddarty3 at bossandpublicschools.org if you've got any additional questions for this assignment.